begin die muziek vir ons. Halleluja. Father, we are ready. We are ready to receive this morning. We are ready to understand our hearts is open. Our minds is open. Our hearts and our minds are clear to receive the word of God this morning. The changes, the the things that need, we need to apply in our lives and bring into existence in our lives. We are excited, Father. There's, in my spirit, there's an excitement. I'm raising an excitement in the spirit this morning over this house. That everything that's spoken, everything that's said will be understood. People will understand it with their, with their, with their born-again spirit, with their mindset. They will know exactly what he said. They will know exactly what what you want to speak to and convey to us this morning, Father, so that nothing will be lost. Nothing will be lost in this day. No word will fall to the ground. It will happen. It will come to pass. No word will fall to the ground and become nothing. Every word will become something, and it will lead to an explosion in the hearts of men and women this morning. And we declare this over this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8 verse 19. I love this scripture so much. I've been pondering upon that scripture for so long. It is such a miraculous scripture just to, to, to know what it says. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Look at that words. What I see in that words, I see there's a day, that there's an expectation. There's an expectation. It's not a church expectation. It's a worldly expectation. The world expects something to happen. And I see another word that stands out. It says, wait. Not only does the word, the world expect, but it waits. It's been waiting now for how many years? For how many decades? How many years have the world have this expectation and they are waiting for the sons of God, for the church to wake up? So that the sons of God can be revealed. Because there is something that the, the sons of God can reveal that the world needs. There is something that the sons of God possesses that they can transfer into the world and the world changes. You see the world is waiting with an expectation and they are, they, they've got the waiting on them and they've got expectation on them. There's a beautiful scripture in Proverbs 13 verse 12 that says, Deferred hope. Hope that is deferred. What does Afrikaans say? Uitgestelde hoop. Hope that's deferred says it makes the heart sick. That word for heart there in the, in the Hebrew is the word leb. And that word leb means mind. So everything that is that is uh, um, um, not happening, not manifesting now, that is referred, uh, it is, makes the mind sick. We, pray, we, we spoke about this in our singing. If you trust God for something, it doesn't happen. You, there's a waiting and there's an expectation and nothing happens. It makes the mind sick. The mind wants it to happen. The, the, everything of your being wants it to happen. But because it is not happening, there is a sickness that comes to the mind. And that, that sickness, we can call it deception, we can call it lies, we can call it whatever you want. But I've seen this in my life, not in my life, I've seen it in the a, in a, in a body of Christ. The moment as there is deferred hope. People trust God for years and years and years and years and years and nothing happens. 
That is the third hope. And I saw and I see how they get sick in the mind of this is not working for me. So the world is waiting. And I think by now that their world is in a place where there is deferred hope. Hope that's deferred. Hope that is... The church doesn't present, the, the church doesn't show, the church doesn't bring forth that what needs the world to change. It's not coming from the church, from the body of Christ, from the ecclesia. Let, let's call it ecclesia. It's, it's not coming from them. We don't see sons of God. We don't see those that rises out of and stands on a place where, where authority is known. We don't see it. When we look at church, you see battlefield. I've, I've, I'm seeing people that, that post things that says the church is a, a, a worship and not a... We, we are busy with... This is a worship, not a worship. I'm telling you, that's a lot of bull. I want you to keep that in mind. That words, three words, sons of God. Now, John 1, verse 11 and 12, in the Old King James Version, speaks something that's very precious. John 1, verse 11 and 12. He, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, verse 12, to them, say with me, he's talking about me. He's talking about the saved. To them. He gave you what? Power. He came unto his own. His own did not receive him. But them. That did receive him. Unto them he gave power. That power, power is the same word that's in Luke 10, 19. Exousia. It means authority. Behold, I've given you the power and authority to trample. Listen, I want you to hear this. I'm giving you the, the authority and the power. I'm giving it to you. Not to somebody else. I'm giving it to you. To trample upon serpents and scorpions. And the physical and mental strength and ability over all. The dunamis power that the enemy has. And if you only will do that, the promise is, no harm shall come upon you. So now that's the same scripture, that's the same word. But as many received him, to them he gave power. To what? To become what? Sons of God. Hear me? We are not automatically sons of God. No, we are not. There's a significant, or oh, let me say this. We were born again. All of us, if you are born again, you were born as a child. We are children of God. Big difference between child of God and a son of God. Not the same thing. Significant, significant difference between the phrases children of God and the phrase son of God. We have to understand that the phrase child of God is an election term. 
an elected term. You and I were predestined before the foundations of the earth. We were elected already there to a place called salvation. Every person on the face of the earth is elected. Every person on the earth, every, every human being that breathes, that walks and talks, belongs to God. Everyone. Everyone. They are all called technon. All of us belong to God, but not all belongs to Jesus. We have to understand that. Massive difference. Jesus says, He says, nobody can go to the, come to the Father except through me. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through me. So there's no way that a person can go to, to Father, to God anymore. Except it is through Jesus. We understand that. We've got that. Okay. Now. The they. The they. Were rescued. From an internal damnation. Through the cross. Let's just see that. That with them there. Let me just get to that scripture. But as many as received him to them. You see that them. That them. That them. They were rescued from eternal damnation through the cross. That's us. God brought us out, out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light. A thing that happened in a spirit dimension, nobody saw that. Nobody saw when you got born again. Because it was not visible. It was not made seenable. And I, I try to explain this. Because people don't understand this. You must remember there's just two kingdoms. Kingdom of darkness, kingdom of God, kingdom of light. If you are not born again, there's no halfway. You're either in this one or I either in this one. There's no other way. No, I I spoke about this on Father's Day, that any kingdom does not give his people just a way without a fight. So we belonged in the kingdom of darkness, and the king there is Satan. So for, for me and you to get into the kingdom of light, he did not just let go. There was a fight in the spirit dimension. And I can just imagine God that, that, that is holding your hand. Satan's got your hand on the other side and he's holding you back. He doesn't want you to go. And God said, let go. It's mine. And God brought you out there and he put you into this kingdom. Now, this, this, this Satan that's the head of this kingdom, he just lost you. And he's not very happy. He's not very happy. That you are now there. He doesn't know what God has for you. He knows what he has on you. And he's going to use everything that he has on you. So that you will renounce there. 
and come back here. So he doesn't want you to let he doesn't want you to go. That's why when we are here in this kingdom, we need to grow. We need to change. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? A prostitute. She gives her life. She's a prostitute in this kingdom. This is what she do. And now she gives her life. And she's saved by the cross. And she comes into this kingdom. What, are, what is she? She's saved, but she's still a prostitute. Everything about her is prostitution. Her mind, her desires, everything that she possesses is still prostitution. She's going to be a whore in the kingdom. Repenting every second day. If she don't change. If her mind doesn't change. If her life doesn't change. Now she needs to lay down that old life. The cross that not make her a hallelujah angel. It saved the spirit. But her mindset is still totally messed up. If you can see that picture, you can see the picture in our day. People that get born again. And people cannot understand why they are still thinking like they. Because they don't change. They don't, they accept the Jesus, they are born again. But their life is not changing. When they open their mouth, it sounds like there. Whatever they do, it looks like there. It is like a duplication of that life there, just manifesting in this one. That's why we need to change. That's why, the, that's why it says, when you, are, when you come out of this, and you are born again, you are born again as a child. You are a child of God. God, you are not a son. It doesn't come cheap. And it doesn't, it's not automatically. That's what it says. What that process did was, it reunited, it reconnected, and it restored the relationship. Now when I'm here, with all that baggage, this line is open. This is restored. I can start now and have and develop and cultivate a relationship with Father. When I'm here. There, nothing. God's not even on a map yet. So this whole thing that happened, that brought you into the kingdom of God, that made you born again, a new life, for many people that's where it ended. Hallelujah, I'm born again. How, how's life like hell? Because you just, draw, you, you just brought back what, what was there into here. And no changes come. And you cannot understand why everything is just not working. Because you're still child. Now. They were spiritually born into this world as God's children. Because they were predestined to salvation. God doesn't want anyone to be, to be lost. And they belong to God. Now they move over into this new kingdom. And it is in this new kingdom that they will instinctively and inevitably start to believe in Jesus. When you were here. When you said, Lord Jesus, come and live in my life. 
That was the beginning of a faith. But it was not the faith. And now you are moved out of this and you are placed here. In this kingdom. So nothing that you have will take you any further if you don't grow it. That baby that is physically born from a mother, if you leave that baby alone, it will die. Because it cannot take care of itself. That baby is full of winds. His diapers are dirty. He's got all the groans and moans. And in the first few months of that baby's existence, nobody knows what's going on in that baby. Nobody knows what's the, what's the cure for whatever is going through that baby. And now when suddenly that baby starts to communicate and can show where it hurts, now you can take care of it. But if you leave that baby, and the baby is two years old, and you leave that baby and you don't feed it, it will die. If you leave that baby that's born again, and you don't feed it, and it's not on its case, and you don't force it, it's because some mothers have to force their children to eat. They are concerned about the child doesn't eat. Open your mouth, you will eat your food. You will sit at this table and you eat till you finished. Do you see this plug? I'm going to hit you. You will eat your food. Now when you do that in the church with Christians that's born again, they leave church. Our faith in Christ makes us all, all children of God. But the faith of Christ makes us sons of God. So the whole world of creation, all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They don't want anything to do with the children of God. So now, but as many as received him, born again, children of God, he gave to them. He gave to these that's born again, to them. To you and me is to them. And he gave the day that we were born again, he gave unto us the power. To become. He did not say he's going to do it. He's not going to do it. He gave the power. For you and me to become. He gave the power. Exousia. Power. To trample. Upon the serpents and the scorpions and the power over all the mindsets, the physicals, everything. He gave that power for you and me to become. So if you don't do anything with that power, you don't become. You want to be a son of God? You have to become. If you don't do anything with the power, you say, a child of God. It is the power that schools a man to become a son of God. It would be so unfair of God to brought you into, into salvation into born again state and just say there's it hallelujah you're mine hallelujah the cross did this for you the cross did this for you and hallelujah just look at the cross and it did not give you the power to do anything
Let me read the scripture. Hebrews 6 verse 1 and 3 from the message translation. I love the scripture. I love the way it speaks. I love the way it says things. It says, so come on. Let us leave. There are some things that you need to put behind you now. You cannot keep on being touched onto those things. There's things that you need to leave behind. You cannot anymore sit with, does God love me? Does He care about me? Let's leave the preschool finger painting exercises on Christ and get on with the grand work of art. Grow up in Christ. Then he says what you must leave behind. The basic foundational truths are in place. Turning your back on salvation by self-help and turning in trust towards God. Baptismal instructions. Must I be born again? Uh, must I be uh, baptized when I'm big or small? I don't want to speak to you about that anymore. Laying on of hands. You will not lay hands on me. Do you know what COVID did? COVID stole impartation. Because the only way that impartation comes is by laying of hands. Transferring of gifts only come by laying of hands. Resurrection of the dead. Eternal judgment. God helping us. We'll stay true to all of that. But there is so much more. Let's get on with it. So all of us received at salvation the power to become sons of God. So that what you have to become is what is already in existence. The phrase sons of God has pre-existed. It was already there in the dimensions of God. I, I don't have the time to go there now to explain that. Can I just say it? Sons of God has pre-existed in the dimensions of God. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. There. There. The sons of God are a dimension of God's essence. Will to some creatures that will pass the examination under the authorities of God. It's God's desire for you and me to be sons. But we will have to qualify what the examinations is. Many as received him to them. He gave the power to be schooled. If you want to become a son of God, you need to be schooled. You have to enroll into a school of the Holy Spirit. You need to be schooled to become the sons of God. But the good news is, we have entered the age of the revealing of the sons of God. We are in that. That had come under the schooling. These people have been schooled. These people have been prepared. Under these authorities of Jesus behind the scene. Remember how many times did I say that in the COVID time? COVID was a beautiful time for preparation to be schooled. It was the perfect time to learn from God Himself. Because you could not do anything, you could not go anywhere except, except before the television. 
But it was a perfect time to be in the presence of God, to be schooled by Father Himself, around the Holy Spirit to minister into our lives, to come into a place of understanding the preparation time that I'm going through, the trials, the tribulations. Are you with me? In the Old Testament, it was called the school of the prophets. In the New Testament, it's no more called the school of the prophets, but it's called the school of the sons of God. And that's what qualifies you to enroll into this institution of the sons of God is your belief, your faith in Christ Jesus. As many as received him to them. Even to them that believed in his name shall be given the authority to be schooled in the institution of the sons of God. So over the years, we've been schooled. We've been schooled. I've learned in an early stage in my life in the kingdom to enroll into the university of the Holy Spirit. So that, that, so that I can be taught. So that I can learn. So that I can receive. And receive impartations. So we've been schooled. How? How, have, how is it that we've been schooled? For some of us. For some of us. We came under the DNA of certain men of God. We had passed on. But the bloodline came into our lives. What do you mean? What are you saying? I'm saying their labor in the spirit has been credited to you. This is a mystery. This is a mystery. For we are one body. And the labor of one is credited to all. How does it work? What's it? Now, I want you to hear this. Listen to this. Since the inception of Christ. I'm going to read it as I wrote it. I'll try and explain it. Since the pre-existence of Christ. Asserts the existence of Christ prior to his incarnation as Jesus. Let me explain it. Let me explain it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word. So Christ is not. He is, is in the beginning. He's a pre existed. He pre existed before anything that was. So we understand that he, he existed before there was. Since the inception of the early ecclesia, the early church, up to date, up to today, men of the Spirit have been laboring. Men of the Spirit have been laboring in the realms of the Spirit. They've been laboring over the years and years. If I, if I have to, let me explain what laboring in the Spirit means. It simply means this, that you are working with the spiritual materials you are working with materials that is in the spirit you don't work with physical things you work with spiritual materials in other words you work with the word of god you work with prayer you work with encouragement you work with edification you work with building you work with sharing and all these things you work it into the assemblies into the people when we teach people when we study the Word of God, when we go and encourage and strengthen people, that is laboring in the Spirit. Anything that you do in the, for the kingdom is laboring in the Spirit. So Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. In 2 Timothy 2, uh, 4 verse 7, he did not depart of his, from the faith. He did not depart with the faith. You hear me? He did not depart with the faith that he had. Some folks in our day, 
laboring in the spirit and possessing that faith, that faith that Paul kept, somebody inherited that faith. And they continue in that level of faith. They continue in the dimensions of faith. And even they increasing in the dimensions of faith. Even to a greater level of faith than what Paul had. Are you with me when I say these things? Do you understand what I'm saying? Hear me when I say this is so profound. This is super profound. When Jesus left the faith. He left the faith in a lower measure. Because this is what he said in John 14, 12. He's, this is what Jesus said. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. The requirement. It's just, it's just the requirement. Not point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, th- until ten. He says, He that believeth, believeth, Keep on believing. You see, belief systems is not the once of now I believe. It is something that grows. And the more it grows, you will never come to the place where you outgrow belief. You will keep on growing in belief and the word in the present continuous tense, believeth will always be part of your life. Always. Now he says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do. That's the first part. The only requirement is if you want to do what Jesus did, is believe on him. We, we, you have to, we have to see this. If you want to do what Jesus did, you have to believe on Him. Your belief system must be at the standard where you believe on Him. And then He says, and greater works. You will have to step up your belief system. And greater works than these, what I've done, shall He do. So if you want to do what Jesus did, Healing the sick, casting out the devils, raising the dead, make the wine, water into wine, make the... All you need to believe on Him. But it says, greater. There's a greater. He says, I began the works, but my works are not much. There is another generation coming that shall do the works that I've done. And they shall do even greater works than what I've done. There's a generation that shall come. The world is in expectation. The world waits for that generation to come. And then there are those that will do nothing. The children of God. Jesus, but I've done my work. I've done the work. I have set the standard of the work. There's a standard for you and me To function on those levels, there's a standard. And Paul inherited where Jesus stopped. Paul took over where Jesus left. And then he increased it to a certain dimension. And then he kept it in the spirit and he left. Other generations come, and they took it from Paul, where Paul left it, and they increased it. And here we are today. 
welcome. We are carrying the DNA of the patriarchs. Can I say it again? Paul increased where Jesus left off. Left off. He increased that up to a point where he came and he, and he left. But he did not take it with. He left it to be inherited so that somebody can take it further. And now we are the ones having the DNA of the patriarchs. Patriarchs, the people of faith that died. That's patriarchs. People that made an impression in the, in the kingdom. The victories of Christ runs in your veins. The conquests of Paul runs in your veins. The victories of Catherine Kuhlman, of William Branham, of Smith Wigglesworth, Billy Graham. The victories of these people, the victories of the cloud of witnesses, runs in our veins. For we have to come to a period in time to final, the final phase. We are there. We are in a, in, a, in a straight line running towards this. The final phase of the harvest. The final phase of the manifestation of all the conquests that had run through the bloodline of the Ecclesia. I'm asking a question. You see, when, when you ask this question to a child, the answer would be, I don't know. But I'm asking a question, whose mantle are you carrying? Whose mantle are you carrying? Whose conquests are you carrying? Whose fire have you inherited? You want to be a son of God? He gave the power. He gave everything is, is capitulated into the power. It's inside of the power. He gave the power to become. There's been prophesied over your life. There's been given information that was received when you were spurred before spurred, when you're not even were sent to the earth yet and it was given unto you and that information was given so that the excitement can rise in your being so that you can know who I am and what I carry whose fire have you inherited fire like Jeremiah fire on my bones I know whose fire I've got. And I know whose mantle I'm carrying. You see, these things, you don't choose that. You don't choose what mantle you want. You don't choose what fire you want to carry. These things are preordained, predestined, before time, ahead of you by God. It was already established it was already given at the assignment, at purpose. But children don't discover nothing. They don't discover anything. It is the ones that, that made a decision to become. They start to, to, to the journey this. They start to discover who I am, what I am, what I can do, who I must be, where I want to go with, where do I get it. To become is a discovery. To become, you have to seek it. To become, you have to hunger after it. It's been passed on through the generations. Paul says, Romans 1 verse 11, he says this. For I long to see you, 
that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts. How do spiritual gifts come? By impartation. Spiritual gifts come by impartation. You don't just get it. You've got it, but you don't have it. It comes by impartation because that impartation is also ignition. Ignites. It's a release. He says, so that you may be established. The Amplified says, be strengthened. So why do you need the gifts? Why, why is the gift supposed to work through you? So that you can be strengthened. So that you can be established. So what he says is, he says, I carry something I can transfer. Sons of God carries something that they can transfer. Children of God, not. They've got nothing to give. They've got nothing to give. All they have is, all what they do is want. I have. I want to have. I want to have. Listen, there's no shortcut in this. To become is not a shortcut. There's not an easy way. We have to go through the trials and tribulations. You have to go through the testings, the fires. You have to go through the furnace. You have, to melt, you have to be melted like gold. You have to be melted like silver. You have to go through these things. Because it's part of the process of preparation. But it doesn't keep on and it doesn't carry on. That word established means to validate. To become recognized and accepted. I need to come and lay hands on you. So that you can be established. So that when you, when you start becoming established, people will start validate you. They will respect you. They will look at you. They will know what you have. They will know where you come from. They will... Paul says, such a spiritual transaction will validate you and you will become. The more you grow, the more you will become. The more you grow in God, the more you become. Just as one man in Christ, one body, we are many but found in one. Let me read this from the Passion Translation, Romans 12, verse 4 and 5. In the human body, there are many parts and organs, each with a unique function. Say with me, I'm unique. And so it is in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we've all been mingled into one body in Christ. This means that we are all vitally joined to one another with each contributing to the other. We are a family that needs to contribute into one another's life. We are inheriting from one another. We go labor in the kingdom. When I win, you win. When you win, I win. Every church, every church in its capacity as the Ecclesia should be in a place where they express. They should be in a place where they are the expression of sons of God in the body of Christ. God is releasing winds of the Spirit that will bring the body of Christ into unity of faith, corporate unity, corporateness, one body. 
Because the Bible says, until we all come into the unity of faith. So there is more of God that will come only when the body corporately becomes a unity in faith. Let me read this. Ephesians 4 verse 1 to 16 in the message. In the light of all of this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, a prisoner for the master, I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourself out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. You are all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction. So stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift. The text for this is, he climbed the high mountain, he captured the enemy and seized the plunder. He handed it all over in gifts to the people. Is it not true that the one who climbed up also climbed down, down to the valley of earth? And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven. He handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teachers to train Christ, Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other efficient and graceful in response to God's sons, fully mature adults, fully developed within, the, with, within and without fully alive like Christ. No prolonged infancies amongst us, please. We'll not tolerate babies in the woods, small children who are easy prey for predators. God wants us to grow up. To know the whole truth and tell it in love. Like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ. Who is the source of everything we do. We, he keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us. Nourishing us. So that we will grow up healthy in God. Robust in love. For the hour has come church. For the body is spiritual. So we will be unified in the realms of the spirit. Can I say it again? We will be unified in the realms of the spirit. I see you in the realms. I see you in the garden of Eden. We are creatures of the garden of Eden. We are not natural men. The seasons for ascension has come. God has given unto each and every born again believer the power to become, the power to become sons of God. And creation is waiting. They've got an expectation. They are looking forward to the revealing of the sons of God. No more infants. Please. No more infants amongst us. Please, says Paul. No more babies. No more children that is tossed around to and fro, in and out of, by the winds of change. Please. 
He says, grow up. Grow up. Sons of God. Ben Elohim. Sons of God. The world is waiting for you. Your workplace is waiting for you. The marketplace is waiting for you. They are waiting for the revealing. Who the sons of God is. Ephesians 4 says, It is the church that will make known the many-sided wisdoms of God. The colorful cloak of Joseph is what we have. We've got it on. It's been given. And it's us that needs to, 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 to demonstrate it unto whom? What, what Ephesians says. He says not only unto the, unto the people, but unto angels. Unto the, the principalities. They've got no idea who the sons of God is. They don't know who Christ is. They haven't seen a manifestation of Christ yet. And they're waiting to see it through you and me. We are the ones that, that must demonstrate it. That must make it happen. But we always fall back. Always. From here to somewhere around here. Not knowing where we belong. If you're born again, you're born again. Finished. Period. Done. You're not going to get born again, again. If you're born again, you're born again. If you're born again, you receive the power. The power is not somewhere out there. The power is not somewhere... Somewhere left, somebody left it somewhere. The power is in you. The power is in you to become. The power is in me to become. It is not the preacher's responsibility to make me grow. It's not the preacher's responsibility to make it happen for me. I'm laboring in the spirit. I'm laboring in the spirit. I'm fighting fights in the realms of the Spirit. I see things in the realms of the Spirit. I change things in the realms of the Spirit. But I cannot make it grow in you. Because the power is given unto you. You want to become? It's in you. If you don't want to become, they will also be there. And they, that, that's there, that doesn't want to become. They've got nothing to give. They've got nothing to share. Nobody wants anything from there. Because it's confusing. It's confusing when you are born again. And when you open your mouth, you sound like an uh, unbeliever. It's confusing. It confuses the people around you. By the power, the exosia has been given. It's been given. It's been given. So that I can become. For me, it's been given for me. So that I can become. It's been given for you. So that you can become. Sons of God. Heels. Heels. Sons of God. Sons that takes responsibility for the kingdom business. Sons that takes responsibility for Father's business. Sons that Father can trust with his business. Sons that Father can say, you make choices on my behalf. You decide. Because I know you will not do it outside of my heart. Outside of my mind. That sons. Children. They want a dummy. And a tissue. And you have to change the diapers. 
because there's a smell. And we love them. We love them so much that we even prophesy over them to become. To prophesy over them to become. But the process to become is not magic. It will take father and mother to become first. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you. Bless you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. In my spirit, I, I can see, Lord, I can see how the world is just staring at us. Staring in such a way that, what happened? Who is this guy? Who is this woman? What? I don't know this person. I don't know this person that I've met. Something dramatically happened in this life. The world is waiting for this father. He's waiting on us. The church. The church. Lord, if I if I just if I if I this morning if I can just say God Forgive us. Forgive us. As, as a member of the body of Christ. For all the million excuses that we have. For all the things that we just throw into the pool. And excuse us from. When we speak, it's difficult times. When we open our mouths, it's the struggles. There's no victories. There's no conquering. Throughout the body of Christ, we hear the difficult times. The difficult days, weeks, months, years. It's just all Conformed into one word. Struggle. Difficult. We don't hear about the victories. The conquerings. And the world is waiting. And the world is waiting and waiting and it's going to wait for many, many years, millions of years. If we don't make a choice to become. It's true that life is not easy. It's true that there's much demands. It's true. And we can keep on with that because all of that is true. But the greater truth is is that everything has been overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The enemy has been defeated. He knows it. We don't have to 
trample upon the serpents and the scorpions. And the physical and mental strength and abilities. We don't have to conquer that. It is conquered. It's already been won. The victory is ours. But we don't grow up. We don't grow so that we can walk in those victories. We keep on living as losers. Punch bags. I am not that. I refuse to be that. I refuse to be the trampled upon. I refused for a snake and a scorpion to come. I refused those things. Because the more I spend time with them, the more my mind is getting messed up. And the, and the, the, the spiritual draw back to darkness is just overwhelming. I'm a conqueror. I'm a victor. I'm walking in the victories of Jesus. I speak the words of Jesus. I make declarations as Jesus. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter where I find myself in. I know what is true. And the truth is, He paid for it all. To become. Paul says, I die every day. We have to die every day. Die every day. We have to put to death the flesh, the mind. We have to die. I don't think that there's one person in a body of Christ that does not desire to become. That testimonies of those that are in the process of becoming. The testimonies are overwhelming. David killed a Goliath. God, I killed many, many judges. There's people that sit here that killed many giants. We've got a testimony. We've been witnessing victories. And we still live our lives as losers. Poor little me. No more. No more. It's time for the sons of God to rise. People that need to make decisions and say, I'm going to become. I'm going to become. Watch me. I'm going to become. Because everything in my life, I'm going to be victorious over it. And you've given it. Oh, you've given it for free. It doesn't cost. There's no money. It doesn't cost us except to die. To give our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Father, that, that you, you planned this to become before the foundations of the earth. It was, it was in, the, in the process of our spirit receivings before we even came to earth. It was already deposited there. It was given their assignments. In that assignment phase. Who I, who I, who I am. And who I going to be. If I become. That excites me. It excites me so much father. Because what we have can increase 
above the abilities of William Branham, Catherine Kuhlman, Reinhard Bonker, Smith Wigglesworth, Lewis, Moodley. I pray for our house. I pray for choices that people need to, needs to make. That rising, there's no resurrection if there's no death. If we want to rise to become, we need to die to become. We need to die to be resurrected. And then we can become. And that's going to be every day. Die. Die. Resurrect. Die. Resurrect. Die. Resurrect. Die. Resurrect. Grow. 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 Speak it over our house. Growth. 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 Growth.